Change is a natural part of God's creation, but leading people through change can be a real challenge. If you've been challenged by moving people, addressing culture, stuck in time, or just trying to make your ministry most relevant. You want to join us as we talk with Dr. Carlton Bird about implementing change on Ministry in Motion. Welcome to Ministry in Motion, Dr. Bird. Glad to be here. Carlton, if I may. Please do so. And you know I'm Ivan. I'm with you. All right. Well, we, man, this subject I am passionate about because it's not a matter of if, but when a pastor has to deal with some type of change. Yes, yes. And from afar, I've watched you be a, in my opinion, a great implementer of change. Okay. And, and being from afar, you don't always see the fallout. <laughs> but I know there is some fallout, some issues that you've had to deal with. You don't come in and put in a barbershop or put wood on the pulpit or change the bathrooms without any kind of process. Right. So tell me, let's dive right in. What, what should a pastor do first when they want to bring change or address change because some people want to change things and they right. see it's evident that it needs to be changed but it may not always be the best process to just do it without any kind of relationship building I don't know talk to me about well, this you're right we live in a changing world I mean okay. we've gone from the rotary phone to yeah. a touchstone phone to a cell phone and now we all have smartphones so we live in a changing world and I think it's important that when you go into a church and you're seeking to facilitate change, mm -hmm. that you have to help people understand that we live in an ever-changing world. I had a deacon that says, I don't believe in change. And I cringe. I said, well, brother, we may not, we may not be on the same page for long. It's interesting. He says he doesn't believe in change, but he's not driving on a dirt road anymore. It's a paved road, you know. Good point. He, he's using a smartphone, you know. If he's in our world today, he may not be doing post mail anymore. It may be email. So we live in a changing world. I think we have to help people understand that. But when it comes to the church yeah. or when it comes to anything that's affecting or impacting us, that's when it could be problematic. As so, long as it's affecting somebody else, we're fine. But if yeah. it's affecting us, we got a problem. Well, I'm talking to the senior pastor of the Oakwood University Church and the director speaker of Breath of Life Broadcast. You got to help us, help okay. the pastors, help yes. the ministry leaders. What do you do when you go in and you know you need to change some things? Okay, so the first thing <laughs> I do is I engage in what I call, it's informal, but really what I'm doing is an audit of the church. Okay. Okay, and I'm getting the people to participate in an audit of the church. By that, I mean helping them to do some self-reflection. This is our mission. Mm -hmm. Are we fulfilling that mission? And do it from a theoretical perspective first. So the first thing I'll do is I'll engage in a survey. Ah. And so I'll have all the members engage in a survey. So the survey may have some questions, including some of these. Uh, what are the strengths of our church? Okay. What are the growth areas in our church? Um, so you're helping them to understand who they are and what the mission is correct. about. What is the mission of our church? Are we helping to fulfill that mission? Okay. Um, if we had to identify the three priorities for our church, what would they be? Mm. And so after getting all that information, then I'll tabulate it all and then I'll go back and share with them. So let's take, for example, hmm. let's take, for example, well, we want to, two common ones that come out all the time, we want to minister to young people. Okay. Or, and then the next one, we <laughs> want to do evangelism. Well, if you want to do evangelism and you want to do and minister to young people, you have to understand that perhaps what you've been doing has been ineffective. Mm. Clearly, you're saying that because you're saying these are the priorities uh -huh. for our church at this time. So with that, you've gotten the membership, the church to be able to say, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. These are our strengths. These are our growth areas. And notice I say growth areas, not weaknesses. Sure. These are our strengths. These are our growth areas. This is our mission. This is how well we're doing with our mission. And these are the priorities for our church at this time. Mm. And so with that, they're identifying, in essence, what we need. They don't know it, 
but they've conducted an audit of the church from their perspective. Ah. Okay? Yeah, keep going. Okay. <clears throat> so then with that, another thing that's a good idea is to engage in what I call best practice visits. Okay. Okay. So I was in one church, I'll leave nameless in one city. <laughs> And while there, I said to the church, okay, we're going to go visit another Christian church here in this city. And we're going to go see what they're doing because clearly mm. they're growing. People in the community are responding. What is it that they're doing? The church is well known. So church is well popular. With you. So what I did was had mm. board meeting ah. at that other church. So we went there. Did you as have a good church attendance? Board. We, at the board meeting, yes. <laughs> now, you have to remember, some of the people felt, well, is this he a heretic? Why are we going right. to another church? Right. Just go. We're not going to necessarily hear a message more so than we're going to see method. Okay. Okay, so we went there, and we were able to see how the officers function, from the greeters mm. to the ushers to the music to the facility because I could show them better than I could tell them. Sure. After we had that visit, we then went back to our church. Mm. We began to identify what we do well and then what we could improve upon. Wow. But by them seeing different things, they were more apt to say, hey, we need to change this. Mm. We need to improve on this. We need to modify this. Because they were saying, clearly, this wow. church is effectively reaching the community. Clearly, they're doing that. We could do better in this. We need to make a change. But they had to see it. They had to see it. They had to see it first. And, you know, it sounds like you are a change agent. For <laughs> you to do that and, and, and come off well, uh, what you're saying is we can learn from other people. We can. We can. Yeah. I can learn from you. You can learn from me. Yeah. Uh, we can learn from Christianity in sure. general. So sure. those within my faith group, those not necessarily in my faith group, mm -hmm. we're all a part of the Christian family. Sure. Because the reality is, you know, I don't know everything. Right. And right. I can learn, and I got to be a lifelong learner. And so with that, I change. You know, we ask people when mm. they join our churches, we ask them to, in essence, change. Sure. Because we say change from this old That's way of true. life and become a part of this new way of life. We ask them to change. Sure. We preach 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Yes. If any man be in Christ, he's a new, new. creature. <laughs> old things are passed away. All things become new. Yes. That's for the individual but what about the collective church? Mm. So if we're not compromising what thus saith the Lord, it's okay to look at things a little differently. I don't write on a chalkboard anymore. Sure. I don't write on a dry erase board anymore, but I use PowerPoint. Wow. Change. Wow. You know, I, uh, I got so much to talk about. This okay. is an exciting subject for me. Um, change can be painful. It can. And can bring about consternation for leaders. Right. Because of the pushback, uh, because of uh, the results that they may not get or right. are afraid to get. So some people just remain stuck and placid and uh, I don't want to go down that road because of maybe what I experienced on the last time. Um, let me just say this. We're going to come back All and right. deal with this. I want to talk about that. Oh, this is, this is real for leaders because leaders live in a world where... We're on a stage, in right. essence, and whatever happens, happens in many ways because of those who follow, those who lead, and the dynamics about change can be very real. We'll talk about that. I want to. We'll talk about that next on Ministry of Motion. Stay with us. We're talking with Dr. Carlton Bird, who is the speaker director for Breath of Life and the senior pastor of the Oakwood University Church. And we're talking about implementing change. Yes. Carlton, man, I love this subject. <laughs> and we left off dealing with the pain or the challenges that people face when they bring about change. I know as much change as God has blessed you to implement mm -hmm. in the churches, the ministries you've been involved in, starting choirs, you name it, mm -hmm. you, you got to have some stories about some challenges, some pushback. Yes. Was all of your, let's do this, let's go here, let's make this happen, was it all peaches and cream? Was it all easy? Nothing is ever easy, particularly change. <laughs> okay. Now, I'll say this. For the church I pastor, I love them all. I love the people. Sure. From a collective standpoint, there has never been any open or overt opposition, okay, from a collective standpoint. When I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> now, from an individual standpoint, from an individual standpoint, you know, you have people 
that say to you, I don't agree with this, or I'm not going to stay, or, you sure. know, you, you have that. Sure. So I don't want anyone to think, oh, man, everything he suggested, everything he said, everybody promoted. That's, you know, that didn't happen. Mm. And we must, the cliche is the key to failure is trying to please everybody. Yes. So you have to stay true to the mission and why you do what we do. Mm. We don't change just for the sake of change. We don't change just for the sake of, let me upset somebody. I don't wake up in the morning and say, I want to upset this person. <laughs> right. So you don't change for the sake of change. But we change because we want to most effectively proclaim the gospel. Wonderful. That's, that's our job. So the way my father, your father, our grandparents, great-grandparents mm. may have done it may not be the way we do it. But we're doing it because we want to effectively proclaim the gospel. I remember having an elder. He said, I've been an elder in this church longer than you've been alive. <laughs> Ironically, that same individual became one of the greatest proponents uh, of my ministry Praise because God. he saw the genuineness, the authenticity, and the sure. heart. Yes. yes. The heart for ministry and the gospel. Mm -hmm. But what I want to share with our pastors, I, I want to share very clearly is that you have to understand with change, there will be some pain. But when you do mm. the right things mm. for the right reasons, yes. God will always bless God will always God. bless. Now, I want to think that mm. one of my strengths is my personality. You know, I learn people's names. I sure, know them. Sure. I memorize them. I learn their children's names, their grandchildren, and everybody. Uh, so I would dare to say that when you're facilitating change, it's easier for people to accept change when they like you. Sure. Okay, so you can't be facilitating change <laughs> and you're mean. You're right. You, you, you got to be nice. So you're conveying optimism. Yes. We can take the hill together. Yes, we, we can do this together. And, okay. and when people like you, it, okay. it's, it's easier. So I would dare to say a part of the process of change is relationship building. Getting to know people, getting people to know you, know their heart. Ah. Um, and with that, it's very similar. You know, we talk about change with evangelism. Mm -hmm. We talk about people changing their lives, you know, accepting Jesus Christ. And so when you accept Christ, there's a change in your life individually. Sure. And a lot of that change is when it's one-on-one, -on -one, okay. be it the pastor with the prospective member, be it the Bible worker with the prospective member or the community residents, mm. resident, excuse me, it, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And so you build that relationship. Okay. And so some of that is one through visitation. It has often be, yeah. been said that people will make decisions for Christ, not in the hall, but mm -hmm. in the home. Mm. So people will make decisions for Christ, not necessarily in the church hall, but in their personal home. Hmm. With change in the church, some decisions are made in the home. Sure. Through pastoral visitation. Hey, I want to talk to you about this. Sure. What do you think? This is what we need to do. This is where we need to go. The church has said that. They identified that in a survey. They identified that in an audit. Okay. This is where we're, how do you propose we get there? We all want the same thing, but our method or the journey might be a bit different. So how would you recommend that? So therefore, yeah, yeah. you're getting buy-in, if you will, in the home. That's happening in a visit. That's happening at home. That's happening on the strength of a relationship. So I would dare to say a lot of people, they agree with you. If you say, you know, we really need to change this carpet. Mm -hmm. They agree with you, but it's the method or the manner mm. by which you change that carpet. And a lot of that for me has been done through that personal relationship. Okay. And in many cases in the home. So earlier we talked about best practices. We talked about people being able to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, people right. can't leave where they've never been. Right. People can't accept something they've never been exposed to. So by visualizing, if we talk about a physical plan, if we talk mm -hmm. about a methodology, they can see it. Okay, that's one way. Another way is through relationship building with visitation in the home. Now, you've mentioned that a couple of times. You mean to tell me you still visit? Oh, yes. <laughs> that, that, is, that is critical. That's a pastor. I love that. That's a pastor. I love that. You know, that. for the pastors that are watching, it's one thing to preach right. in the pulpit. Right. It's another thing to lead your people. Yes. Uh, you know, leadership is not title or position. Leadership is following. Yes. You gotta, you, people have to be following you to be a leader. What I've heard you say is that change comes easier if you have relationship with the people you're leading. That's correct. Now, I want to go maybe even a level deeper now, because when I think about the ministry of Christ, you know, he, he butted heads, bumped yes. heads with those gentlemen called the Pharisees. Yes. And he said to them, you know, you're teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. They were stuck in their traditions. Let's talk about helping people to change and leave their traditions. Maybe it's theology. Maybe it's just the way we've always been done it, always done it. Mm -hmm. 
Does relationships help with that layer as well of change? Definitely. And we have to remind people in our preaching and our teaching. Mm -hmm. We're very quick, and I digress to a point I made earlier. We are very quick to quote Mark chapter 7 when uh, we talk about you're following tradition and you're following the commandments of men. We're sure. very quick to tell other people that. Sure. But we got to get people to do some self-introspection. Yes. And I think people lack in self-awareness really where they are. Mm -hmm. And I think gently we have to help them understand, are you doing the very thing you're accusing other people of uh, doing? Yes. Are you doing the very thing? So with that, we have to understand through the relationship building, but also through teaching, and through preaching, mm -hmm. we have to help people understand, look, am I the problem? Am right. I unwilling to change? Sure. Am I doing the very thing I'm telling other people don't do? Mm -hmm. And so with that, I think when we gently point that out to people through relationship, through preaching, teaching, it, it, it's very profitable for facilitating that change. Um, have you had people once oppose after you made the change, jump on board and say, you know, this was the way. I think you said that with, definitely, with, definitely, definitely. with the person yeah, who... Yeah, people, you know, people want to yeah. be a part of a winning team. Right. I mean, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I would name some NFL teams right now that are winning teams, but I don't want to do that. But sure. people want to be a part of a winning team. And so my thing is, come be a part of this team. Yeah. Let's win this city. Let's win this community. Let's win it for Jesus. Mm. Come be a part of the team. You cannot help row the boat if you're rocking the boat. So uh. come be a part of this team. Come be a part of the winning team. When we come back, I want to thank you. When we come back, we're going to look at some points that Pastor Berg can help you with in implementing change, maybe some steps, some ideas that he hasn't already shared. Stay with us on Ministry in Motion. We're with Pastor Carlton Bird, Senior Pastor of the Oakwood University Church, Speaker Director for Breath of Life Broadcast, Television Broadcast. We are dealing with implementing change, and boy, you know, change is a natural part of God's creation. Sun in the day, moon at night, I mean, the seasons, God made all of this, but we don't do too well with change in churches. What is the one element that I think will help, or you think, not mm -hmm. I, this is okay. about you bringing us uh, some ideas. What is the one element you think would help pastors and ministry leaders in implementing change in a less, um, I'll say, in a more genteel manner? <laughs> okay. Well, I think, you know, we've discussed some things a little earlier. Yes. Uh, relative to change and some methods to help facilitate that. Mm -hmm. But then I also want to suggest that you got to plan for change. Okay. Okay. Nothing stays the same. Mm. In many of our church communities where our churches exist, uh, the communities have changed. Right. You know, we have in our major urban areas gentrification taking place. Right. So where in our communities formerly, Mm -hmm. uh, people were moving out of the urban areas, out of the city to the mm -hmm. suburban areas. Mm -hmm. But we now see a thrust to people coming back in our communities and whatnot. So language even changes in community. <laughs> definitely. But we still are called upon by God right. to effectively and relevantly minister in our communities, even okay. though they're changing. So I think we have to plan for that. A, a part of that is forecasting. What is my community going to look like in 20 years? Mm. What is the church going to look like in 20 years? Mm -hmm. If the Lord delays his coming, what will our world look like in 20 years? And, mm. you know, Jesus said it clearly occupy sure. till I come. Sure. So I think we have to strategically plan and intentionally plan for what change is going to look like. Mm. So for me in a church, I, when I get introduced or installed, when I'm introduced and installed, I will engage in a formal and informal strategic planning process. Okay. Okay. So for me personally, I'll say to myself, okay, what needs to be accomplished in a year? Mm -hmm. What needs to be accomplished in three years? What needs to be accomplished in five years? What needs to be accomplished in 10 years? So mm. for me, I have a personal pastoral strategic plan of what I feel the Lord is leading me to do in this one, three, five, and 10 year period. Yes. And with that, you know, you have your theoretical desires, your goals. Mm -hmm. And then with that, you then begin to plan, what will I do specifically to effect these goals? Now we do it personally. 
Mm -hmm. You know, we'll say even for our professional development as pastors. Right. Well, in so many years, I want to accomplish this educational milestone. Right. We may even say in our lives by this year, I want to purchase this house or whatnot. Sure. So how much more should we do that in our professional ministry? When we're at a church, we're, we're at an assignment, and we're saying, this is where I want to go within the spirit. I love that because you're not only looking forward, but in a previous segment, you also said do an audit. So you didn't forget their past. Correct. You looked at their past, and now you're moving forward. Uh, I, I know that people don't follow generally if they don't know where they're going. Right. And so can you help us with maybe dialing down just a little bit into how strategic plans can be developed. When I, when you lead a church, when you walk a church through the process of where are we going to be in five years, what does that look like? Okay, so mm -hmm. what that looks like is I'll ask the Lord mm -hmm. for a personal pastoral uh, plan, if you will. Okay. And then we begin to share with the church board, the church body, okay. even the board of elders, this and not necessarily in that order. I know sure, the board sure. of elders, church board, church body. Sure. But in a year, where do we want to be? Okay. In three years, where do we want to be? So let's take an example of that. So in three years, if our church says, we want a new church school building, okay, there are certain things that are going to have to happen mm. in order for that to happen. Sure. So you can't just wait and say, we want a church building in three years, and then, <laughs> you know, it just happens. <laughs> right. Abracadabra. No, that's not going to happen. Right. You've got a plan for that, and there are certain things that must be done. So you know that if you're going to build a new church school facility, for example, mm -hmm. then you've got to make sure enrollment increases from where it is sure because somebody has to pay for it yes right. the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof <laughs> right. but somebody has to pay for that well you have to begin now so a recruitment process mm -hmm. for students mm -hmm. uh, is necessary positive public relations is necessary because those things will contribute to the ultimate goal in three years mm. of having a church school building yeah you follow what i'm saying so i just use that as an example sure so there are certain things along the way, along the journey, in the process that must transpire in order to reach this goal here. So you've got to share that mm. with the church so that the church understands, okay, this is why we do this. This is why we do that. So if the ultimate goal is we want to have a 50% growth in youth ministry, be it attendance, participation, mm -hmm. then there are certain things that have to transpire in that process. Gotcha. You know, it may mean that we've got to be inclusive of our young people in the worship experience. It may mean that we have to be intentional by identifying young adults on the church board. Okay. If we're trying to get to this goal in five years of increased youth ministry. Okay? Is that why you put a, a barbershop definitely. in my form of church? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, you are right. You're referring, you know, we, we said... Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to be more community minded. Okay. We want to be more community engaged, if you will. Sure. Well, that's the goal. So you may say in five years, we want to accomplish this. Right. Well, along the way, if we're going to get there, then putting a barbershop mm -hmm. in the church for community residents and church members alike to patronize sure. was one way we get to that goal of community engagement. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I tell you, um, <laughs> We don't have enough time, but I tell you, before we close the broadcast, I want to ask you about this whole thing of, of being a change agent. How do you multiply yourself? Uh, I know you believe in hard work, mm -hmm. and hard work, you have to work in order to bring about change. That's right. But you're only one person. How do you bring about change being a multiplier? In other words, you don't lay the towel in the new renovated bathrooms. What Quickly, what is your process to engage others? Number one, you did touch on it. You, you talked about my work ethic. I yeah. do believe people are inspired mm -hmm. when they see the leader actively a part of the process. Okay. So therefore, I would dare to say our church staff, I would dare to say our church members, they would all say, as you have said, about my work ethic. And then mm -hmm. they also will be inspired knowing He's not going to ask us to do what he's not willing to do himself. Okay. So, so therefore, I think there is some benefit to that in terms of modeling it. Mm -hmm. I think this forum is another forum yeah. where I want to let people know you can do it. You know, th there's no supernatural anything about Carlton Bird. Sure. But God rewards faithfulness. He so does. hopefully through this medium, mm. other colleagues, other friends, other pastors will see if God has done it for him, God will also do it for me. So this is a forum. And then also being intentional mm. about mentoring, particularly younger pastors. And the okay. Lord has afforded me that opportunity with the pastoral staff at Oakwood 
and the students at Oakwood University sure. that we're able to model and mentor it to young people. So number one, inspire your church members. Okay. I'm not asking them to do what I'm not willing to do myself. Sure. Number two, this is a forum and also through printed literature and periodicals. And then number three, mentor and model it to other young people. Thank you. Thank you. A I breath appreciate of fresh air. I love God. dealing with change because everybody doesn't know how to maneuver and bring it about. But thank you for sharing and thank you for being with us on Ministry in Motion. Let's summarize our broadcast today. Before bringing about change, you should conduct an audit of the mission of the church. Then learn best practices from other churches then change should come within the context of a strategic plan. We're so glad you've joined us on Ministry in Motion, and we hope that we've impacted your life as you implement change. Until next time, God bless you.